Not that kind, not DJ energy. Anyways, hey, it's Eric back at you with yet another beer review. And today, I'm trying to record a Sosis review for the third time. Reason being, number one, first bottle I opened, new label, this is the old label, which I happen to love, um, poured all crystal clear. It was super bitter. It was not even close to the same beer that I was drinking on draft at Morning Delight Day. Um, at Tough on Goliath on Saturday. This is Thursday night. And um, it just, I was like mystified. And then I contacted Ryerson from behind the bar, beer reviews or reviews. And uh, he thought the exact same thing. He set up studio and he did the same thing I did. And he was just like, we were both stupid. So we got some insider knowledge. The first bottles, um, I guess, just were a little different. And like I said, this was bottled on 826 of 15, my birthday. And, uh, Toppling Goliath double IPAs or IPAs tend to get better with time. And what I mean is that, like, King Su, fresh, I poured a glass. Crystal clear. King Su three weeks later, haze bomb. Can't even explain it. Way different beer. Bitter, piney, resinous, juice bomb. Same thing with Sosis. So this Sosis here is um, eight days old in this glass and I pre-poured it out, let it warm up a little bit. Nick from What Cheers, thanks so much man for suggesting that. It's really changed the way I look at IPAs, double IPAs, and I actually had some shaving cream on my face when I tried to record it the second time. So, and then I got interrupted by a buddy who's picking up a bottle. Um, so anyways, this does pour out a hazy golden orange like a New England beer. Really can't see too much of the fingers behind it. Um, that TG Snifter though, look at that. You're going to see that in another video, if you know what I mean. Anyways, um, so this is 8.5% double IPA. I've reviewed it before. I really, really liked it. I mean, I fucking loved it. That was like a year ago. Then they re-bottled this beer. Got a bottle. Bitter bomb again. Mike wasn't there, to be fair. Or maybe he was. Either way, 8.5% double IPA. Um, Ryerson and I, from behind the bar, we're discussing this weekend how this is a King Sue killer. This is the double IPA people should be talking about from Top on Blood. And judging by that pour, and judging by the first few sips, we might be right. So let's dive into the nose of Sosis from Top on Goliath Brewing Company. Oh man. It, it's just like on draft for me. It... It's straight juice. It's straight mango, pineapple, peachy, blueberry, acai berry, pear. I get a bit of apricot. I get all these weird, just super tropical and luscious fruits. And I'm a gusher preacher. Somebody commented on my video um, and called me a gusher preacher. And I'll take that as a compliment. Gusher alert is right. This is like, I mean, it's just, I don't even really have to put my nose. My whole dining room smells like luscious tropical fruits. This is, this is a return to form beer for Sosa's. This is a juice bomb. Um, I do smell a little bit of candied citrus peel, lemon, lime, grapefruit. Um, kind of that piney, resinous, dank quality that you can sometimes get with Mosaic Hops. Uh, a really good brewery to reference to is El Segundo Brewing Company. They do a couple beers with Mosaic, and Casey and Ryan have sent me a couple. Thank you so much, by the way. Um, those tend to have a lot of those, like, citrus candied rind peel of, like, grapefruit and stuff like that, and they're a little bit more dank and dry. There are dank and dry resinous notes in here. Like, it's torn whether it wants to go from New England IPA or West Coast IPA. So it's an Iowa IPA. That's what I call it. That's what it is. Yeah, it's straight juice. Um, I think I like the nose better than King Sue. And having just had it on Saturday, this is the clear winner. So let's go ahead and get the taste of it. You know, I'm serving this, oh, about 52 to 55 degrees. Maybe a little warmer. Cheers. Thanks so much for stopping by for another beer review. Man. It's like, wow. I mean, fucking wow. It does taste like a top of the glass beer. Um, I, I handed this glass to my buddy out there. I stopped by to get a bottle, and he goes, yeah, this tastes like one of their beers. I'm like, well, yeah, they're starting to have their own, kind of their own use, 
uh, modified yeast profile, their own water. Things do start to taste a little bit alike, and um, I have to agree with them. I, I struggle. It's everything in the nose. It's apricot juice. It's like nectarine, like white fleshy peach skin. And then, you know when you peel a peach, like if you peel peach or nectarine skin off the fruit, you get like those fleshy, like fibrous hairs, if you will, from the fruit, pulpy, if you will, you get that in this. And then you get like, like a pureed um, peach blueberry mixture. And then some acai berry and some passion fruit. Straight guava. It's just, it's it's so tropical. I can't even believe this is happening with mosaic hops. This is just mystifying. And, God, it, it's so good. How can you not share this or crack another bottle over your head and enjoy it? Guys, the Hop Patrol, Clark, Mike, Flanker, you guys are just, you're putting out world-class beers, as you already know, but you keep elevating them. Um, I talked again with Nate about the evolution of IPA. We talked about how Pliny and West Coast um, beers kind of put IPA on the map, Stone, Ruination. Um, and then kind of how East Coast did their own thing with like Dogfish Head, 60, 120 minute. Um, some other that are escaping my mind immediately. And then we kind of talked about the new new wave of IPA. And it really started about three, four years ago with the birth of Hill Farmstead, um, Hetty Topper, uh, Treehouse, Trillium is like, what, two years old? And then Topple and Goliath, who's about four-ish years old, who doesn't do anniversary beers, by the way, which is kind of cool. Um, they don't cash in on that hype train. Or do they? <laughs> Anyways, subtle, subtle jabs, but... Um, I'm in. I bought in. And uh, here I am reviewing another one of their beers after swearing I'd never review their beer again. I mean, things change quickly. And it's remarkable how quickly this beer has changed from bottling. The first bottle I opened, and I was like, oh my god, what is this? We had a conversation hours long about what this beer, ha what happened to it. And now it's straight juice. And it's... Uh, it's straight hunts. It's, it's fucking amazing. It's perfect. Warmed up. It's tropical fruit juice. It's got the perfect balance of bitterness. It doesn't make me cringe. It doesn't make my mouth buckle. It doesn't make my tongue kind of go, you know, it, 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 it's a little on the sweet side, but I think it works. I was given this five caps all day long on Saturday, and I'm giving it five caps now on Untapped. If you don't have my Untapped, I will leave it in the description below. I will leave my Instagram, my Twitter, which I don't really tweet anything interesting, so sorry if you follow me there. Um, yeah, straight 100 out of 100. I don't give many out, but uh, I gotta give love where love is due and respect is due, and so says you're getting it. Joe, I can't wait for you to review this. By the time it hits your doorstep, should be sometime late next week, and you should be doing the same review, and I hope to God you're on the Hunnitz train. You want to know how you know a hoppy beer is fucking unbelievable and out of this world? When you burp it up. Seriously. I burp up tropical hop juice. Well, not juice, but hop juice flavors. <laughs> It'd be weird if I'm regurgitating. Anyways. I got nothing. Perfect beer. Toppling glass sauces. Thanks so much for stopping by. I can't keep you for 30 minutes. Just kidding, Nick. Love you guys.